Are pilots' watches a relic? Are they just redundant equipment from the days of old, marketed with fast jets and uniforms to sell more watches? Or do they still have a genuine purpose as tools of aviation? Today, we're off flying with the Top Gun 41 and asking a real pilot the all-important question. But first, the specs. This is the Top Gun 41, IWC's stealthy jet black pilot's watch. This one lent to us by IWC themselves via the new Leeds Boutique, so thanks to those guys for that. The watch itself is a 41.9mm chronograph with a height of 15.5mm. It's made of a deep black ceramic case with titanium case back, pushes, crown and buckle. It has 100 meters of water resistance, all you need, weighs 106 grams and is paired on a quick release black rubber strap. It's powered by the IWC 69380 automatic column wheel chronograph movement, beating at 28,800 vibrations per hour with 33 joules and a 46 hour power reserve. This one features Cote de Genève finishing, is wrapped up in a soft iron anti-magnetic core, however it is covered by the Top Gun titanium case back. The dial is matte black with recessed 30 minutes, 12 hours and a sub-second dial. Hacking sub-second dial. This movement also allows a day and date display at 3 o'clock. The large and legible numerals and markers are super luminova and the slightly convex crystal features anti-reflective coating on both sides. IWC also states that the sapphire crystal is protected from sudden drops in air pressure. Handy if you're a jet pilot. I am not a jet pilot, but we are flying later and it is pretty cool. The watch itself retails for £8,200 and comes in Oceana Blue and the very popular Mojave Desert colorway. It's an overall improvement on the line, but specifically on the movement. IWC used to base some of their movements on ETA lines like the 7750. Whilst the dial layout is similar to the 7750 base movements, the gear train and escapement are completely different. Now that's all good and well, but how does it actually wear? This is Tom. He's going to be modelling for us today. Hello. Coffee? Coffee. Despite its utilitarian looks, the Top Gun 41 blends into civilian life with ease. It leans extremely well into a casual outfit and occasionally into smart casual. I say occasionally because the stark black jet colour is a contrast to most clothing. However, the matte finish on the case and the titanium hardware helps this be a little bit more seamless. On the wrist, the watch definitely does have presence, about 106 grams of it to be exact. However, it's not enough to be cumbersome, which is good because at 15.6 millimetres, the watch does sit rather high. So it's not gonna fit into jacket sleeves as well but that's not really what this watch is about and it's not too tall and that's all that matters. Going back to feel, I'm a big fan of IWC's rubber straps. They're extremely supple, more supple than cheaper options out there and the titanium hardware helps reinforce the fact that this is a hardy tool watch. Unless you drop it, this watch is going to be very well protected from everyday life and even tougher scenarios. Ceramic and titanium being notoriously hard to scratch. Also, the IWC quick change strap feature is brilliant. It's something I've loved playing around with. I have noticed one thing though. If you tend to be like me and wear lots of watches in a day or you throw watches in pouches or pockets, the strap can occasionally pop off when it's folded back on itself. Now I'm just being extra pedantic here because that's not really a problem for most people. This watch is gonna be on the wrist 99% of times. And when it's on the wrist, it's definitely not going anywhere. Absolutely zero complaints in that department. Overall, I really love their straps. I've had the watch for about three weeks now and I've been timing everything just for fun. One thing I have noticed is that because the brushed titanium pushes do sit higher, it's very easy to get to whilst wearing the watch on the wrist, as opposed to slimmer chronographs like say a moon watch or a Daytona. And the fact that they're not screwed down helps make everything a little bit more speedy when you're trying to be quick also. Overall, the watch has been a pleasure to wear. I'm a vintage man predominantly, so I've been very grateful of that larger crown and quick set date features. Even the 41mm case size, which is big for my taste, has been something that I've got on with reasonably well. 
The overall fit, the feel, the aesthetics, it's brilliant. It looks like it's come straight from the dash of a plane, which is funny because I'm here at Sherbin Aero Club to find out the truth about Pilot's watches. Is it all just marketing fluff used to sell more pieces or are they still a genuine tool to be used in the sky? We're going to be taking the Top Gun 41 into the sky today to get some real use out of it, asking the pilot if they're still relevant and seeing if he'll let me have a go at flying the plane. So I've got the watch, but now I just need a plane and a pilot. I'm James Fletcher, 30 years old. I'll show you that again. Yeah, Sorry. Go for I've got my own age then. James Fletcher, 30 years old. I've always wanted to be a pilot since I was very, very small. Yeah, I love the freedom, uh, especially when you're flying small aircraft like this. Uh, this is a Pier 28, uh, originally brought out in 1961. Uh, this one was in the late 80s, it was actually built. It was built in America to replace, I think it was the Tri Pacer that was before it. I think we need to improve to people that have actually uh, got the watch on there. Don't know what we're timing, but we're going to time something. So that part isn't technically true. There is a very genuine reason that pilots wear chronograph watches, and it's called dead reckoning, also known as deduced reckoning. Because before all the fancy gizmos that pilots have now, you could use your last known position, an estimated or known airspeed, over an elapsed period of time to work out your current air position or how long it was going to take you to get there. And back in the days of old, this was often done using a watch. Here's James to explain this further. Uh, using time in terms of the aeroplane, uh, we work out a, a mileage and then your ground speed, and then we can work out how long it will take to get to the point. So for instance, in the aeroplane, we went to York, uh, set the clock, uh, it worked out it was roughly eight miles. Uh, with the ground speed that we had, it was going to be a seven minute leg to get there. So we used a stopwatch and your watch, and uh, we got there at 11 minutes past, which is when we needed to get there. So here we are flying over York in the north of England. I'm voiceovering this section because unfortunately there was a mix up with the headsets and how we could record. But I do have to say it was extremely cool to use this pilot's watch for its intended purposes up there in the cockpit in the sky. And he even let me take the wheel. For the first time in my entire life, with the Top Gun on my wrist, I was flying a plane. And it was epic. But there is still some very important questions to answer. First, what watch does James wear when he flies? Uh, when I'm flying light aircraft in general aviation, I use an Apple Watch just because it's got weather very quickly available to me. And as a quite a busy flying instructor, it's got my schedule on there so I know when the next flight is. Uh, when I fly commercially at work, I use my Tagger chronograph. Uh, a, because it looks nice, uh, and B, if all the systems failed, it's an analog piece of equipment that I can quickly use to work out timings. So Apple Watch for instructing, Tag Heuer chronograph for commercial flights, in case something fails. But this is a super slim chance, as he mentions here. So really, if, if things did really go wrong, we need to start working out timings. We'd be using the GPS and radio nav equipment before we started just pointing the airplane in a direction and, and uh, noting the time. But now it's time for the big question the one we're all here for. With all things considered, are modern pilots' watches just marketing or genuine tools? I think the purpose is a genuine tool for the sky. However, does every pilot wear a, uh, a pilot watch? Probably not. I'd say only a slim amount of people actually do. A lot of people wear Apple watches or uh, another, another analog piece of equipment. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think the actual branded of, of a Top Gun or something like that is probably only a few people. Most, uh, especially like airline pilots, earn so much money they're probably wearing Rolexes. Now, I know what you're thinking. Rolex GMT Master, for example. Technically a pilot's watch. But James is a top man who gave us some great insights today while some idiot fooled around with a camera in his face. And he did answer our question in a roundabout way. He did say he wears an analog watch on his commercial flights, and we have sold real heritage pieces to pilots in the past. In case you didn't know already, we do sell vintage watches, like these ones. Feel free to check out the website if you get some free time. But he did also mention that it is a slim number of pilots wearing pilots' watches. Which does make sense, because let's be honest, these watches are not a necessity anymore. 
at least not a job specific one anyway. It's probably safe to say that any pilots wearing these watches are probably just like you and I, an appreciator of fine watchmaking and heritage. And this applies to all watches, not just pilots watches. After all, our phone tells the time. We buy watches like this for the same reason that people go out and buy classic cars, to show off. No, 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 I, I am just joking. But if you go and sit in a classic Ferrari, you know that it's not gonna go around the track as well as its modern counterpart. Just like the Top Gun 41 isn't gonna give me live weather reports like James's Apple Watch. But there is a connection, an appreciation, a sense of completeness with a watch like this. It just feels right. There's really no feeling quite like it. So whilst pilots' watches maybe aren't as essential as we may have thought, there's still a very good chance that there's a high number of them above your head, flying through the sky right now. There's just one more thing I need to say before you go. We don't get paid by IWC to make these videos. If you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more stuff like it, the best thing you can do to help support us is click that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. The more subscribers and views, the more opportunities we get, the more content you can enjoy. For more frequent content, you can follow us over on Instagram and TikTok at What's On Watches. I've been Josh Cullen from What's On Watches. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you soon.